Uh, ER docs is a challenge, uh, and that's a great thing about it. Every day is something new. You never know what's going to walk in the door. We basically have what we call the golden hour, which allows us one hour to treat the patient and before they have deterioration. So it's a huge challenge in order to be able to make the right diagnosis as quickly as we possibly can for the patients. Hello, sir. How are you? Hey, hey my name is Dr. Nichols. I'm the emergency room doctor. I understand you're having a little difficulty breathing. Is that right? A lot of difficulty. Yeah? Tell me about it. How long has that been going on? Off and on for two years. But... So you've been running fevers? Seem to be running a little bit. Yeah, you having some chills, kind of some rigors? Yeah, during the night. He's got a complex medical history. He's been in multiple different hospitals. But I really need to take a look at his medical records, see what's going on. Because at this point, I don't know if it's pneumonia, I don't know if it's heart failure, which can both give you shortness of breath. There's inefficiencies built into medicine everywhere. Um, but one of the biggest things is as patients come in, um, being able to give us a good medical history. Oftentimes, the patients aren't educated. Um, and they're not able to, to tell me about their medical history to the level of detail that I need in order to be able to, to make an outcome change. So um, being able to have that information available to me um, is vital. You know, we do as physicians worry about doing harm to patients because we don't know enough about them when they come into the emergency room setting. And it is a very real danger. Data shows that somewhere between one in five and one in ten patients that come into the hospital have a major complication related to their care. I've seen many patients who've had a, a problem with a drug allergy and yet have been given that drug a second or even a third time because doctors didn't have the records available showing that they'd had that drug allergy in the past. This is why providers across the U.S. are turning to health information exchanges. HIEs, as they're known, provide secure online access and routing to patients' charts among a network of providers. Hospitals, clinics, doctor's offices, and pharmacies join an exchange so they can have timely electronic access to records their patients will allow them to share. For patients, this means having their medical records available no matter where they go. And for providers, it means having instant access to life-saving information when seconds count. In emergency medicine, it's, it's, it's just uh, revolutionary, actually, uh, because we've never had patients hold records, uh, or it's been very, very spotty if, if, at best. I would hate to go back. <laughs> to uh, candles instead of light bulbs, but uh, that, that would be about equivalent to what it would be like. Starting to feel a little bit better. The medicine starting to kick in a little bit. It's already saving lives in Memphis, Tennessee. This gentleman has uh, extremely bad emphysema in his lungs, and he's had recent pneumonias. We can pull data from other hospital systems and be able to look at overall how's his lung functions been, how's his kidneys working, has it gotten worse? Um, and not just through our hospitals, but through all the other hospitals that he's been, been visiting. He's had metastasis to bone, so he's had cancer that's gone to different areas. Is this something else that could be going on today? All that information I wasn't able to, to garner from the patient, but I have to know that information to be able to make the right treatment decisions right now. I've practiced medicine in a lot of different settings over the course of my life, and I think it's very hard for a member of the public to understand just how hard the job of a provider is. Let's take, for example, a provider in the emergency department, and you come into my emergency department and you're critically ill. I've got to solve a puzzle, and I've got to solve that puzzle quickly. Now, in the old days, what you had to do was solve that puzzle with paper. You had to hope and pray that the person could tell you enough information about their health, or you could call a relative, or call a, a practitioner's office, or call a pharmacy and get enough information to solve the problem. And you never really could. You could get enough information to feel very comfortable that you probably weren't going to do much harm, but it was sure wasn't efficient. And it sure wasn't in the best interest of the individual being cared for, not having all that information. You know, when you read about errors and the other things that can also cause harm, it's because providers, well-intentioned as they are, don't have the information they need. So health information exchange has changed this dramatically. Because with health information exchange now, 
when I see you in my emergency department, I can get pretty quick access to all the medications from your pharmacy. Sometimes I can get access to all the medications that you take at home, the over-the-counters and the like. I can get access to those allergy lists. I can get access to those notes from your other providers. I can get access to those laboratory reports and see what happened in your other hospitalizations. What is that scar? What did that mean? Oh, it was an appendectomy back in such and such a year. All of that just put together. I just move these pieces here, 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 here. And I put them together and I solve that puzzle very quickly, very efficiently. Now another way that health information exchange solves a puzzle is if you then th go back and see your primary care practitioner. Quite often what takes place in the um, exciting atmosphere in emergency department isn't transmitted well to that provider. But with health information exchange, the minute you come out of that emergency department, you come back into my provider office in your outpatient setting, that information is right there like that. And so you take the piece here, take the piece here, take the piece here, take the piece here, boom, you solve the problem again and you go on. That's really important for primary care. As you know, primary care providers are under a lot of pressure these days. They have to see a lot of patients. They would much rather spend their time talking to you about what's important to your health, what's important to your life, than trying to go around and get an information here, get a fax there, fill out a form here, get a request there, and put the puzzle together. They would much rather talk about you and make from that puzzle a greater thing about your better health. Experts tell us that about $660 billion a year, almost a quarter of what we spend on health care, is unnecessary spending, doesn't do anything to improve quality. And a lot of that unnecessary spending is in duplicate testing that people don't need. Some of the most common things we see here in the emergency room are headaches and the routine when people come to the ER with a headache is to get a CT scan. We've had some patients who've had as many as 20 or 30 head CTs over a two-year period. That's enough to give you brain cancer, even if you didn't start with it. In the last five years, hospitals using Memphis, Tennessee's Health Information Exchange have saved $10 million from fewer admissions and fewer tests. But the number of lives saved and mistakes avoided is immeasurable. For Lee Sterling, having a health exchange could have changed everything. You hear a word coming out of the physician's mouth, and suddenly time stops because your head is wrapping around that single word. And when I stopped him and I said, are you telling me that he has cancer? So my husband had surgery, had the tumor removed, everything came back negative. And um, 22 months went by. And my husband came home one day and it was just interesting that that particular day when he had gone to get his blood work results, he happened to bring home a copy of the lab report. I said, well, I'm flipping the page <laughs> over and I said, where is your CEA marker? I said, I, I want to know what your CEA is looking like right now. And this is, this is the cancer marker for colon cancer. So I picked up the phone and he called his primary care physician's office, um, was speaking with the physician's assistant, and he said, can you tell me what my CEA is? And her response was, we thought that the surgical oncology group was monitoring that. And sure enough, his liver was fully engaged with cancer lesions in all parts of the liver and his lower left lung. We took the scans back to the surgical oncologist to show him. He looked and he looked very startled and he said, she was doing all the blood work. And I said, yes, I understand that now. But again, she thought you were doing it. He shook his head and he said, we should have caught this. Again, it's just, I don't know that the outcome would have changed, but it's really hard to look back at the situation and not ask yourself whether or not things could have changed if they knew. Providers, they have so many things thrown at them right now. 
There's very few who say, I don't want anything electronic. There's very few who will say, I don't want the right information at the right time. But a lot of them are saying, I'm trying to see 50 patients a day or whatever it is. How do I work that into my workflow? They're not resistant so much as they just can't conceive of how it all fits. At the end of the day, everybody's a little skeptical because most people in their workflow and in their routines every day have developed methods that they believe are most effective for them. So there is a natural resistance to change. Oh, there are definitely growing pains. With any change, there's a growing pain. I mean, I don't like changing my versions of the spreadsheets and word processors I use, but I do it for the benefits. And when the benefits outweigh the pain of the change, it always happens. I've been in healthcare for almost 25 years now and have spent the entire career trying to improve the quality of care or improve efficiencies of systems. And this is the first time where I actually can begin to look at measurable outcomes, where I can see and hear a story from a provider who can tell me how he's made a difference in a patient's life. So, I mean, it's all sort of coming together. And people in healthcare have been fighting this and fighting this in some ways. We've been our own worst enemy. But I think now we're at the cliff and we're about to jump over, and I think it's exciting. Hey, sir. I was able to review your medical records. There's some important things in there that we, you know, that we looked at that's going to change a little bit on what we're going to do with it. All I had to do was look at the test results that have been done um, fairly recently at our hospital and other hospitals to be able to make a treatment disposition on this gentleman right away. He was able to get the right treatment at the right time. That's what we always want to do with our patients. It's going to happen. It's just going to take time. And we have to invest the time and energy into it. And when we find a win, we have to promote the win. It shouldn't be Vicki Estrin telling the story any longer. It needs to be that provider who tells the story. And that story needs to be told, and it needs to multiply, it needs to grow. There's a whole lot of storytelling that needs to start. And I think we're starting to reach a point where we can start telling the stories.